Welcome back to Discovery Studio World. My name is Lee Apted, and today we are going to go to politics and the media. They seem to go hand in hand, and with Donald Trump and Kamala Harris vying for the presidential seat in the White House, it is in full flow. Personally, if you've been following me on Discovery Studio World at for any length of time at all, you all know that my main opinion about the mainstream corporate media is not a, a very good one. Never been too fond of it, and indeed I will be making videos uh, in the future which explain this in a lot more detail. But um, when I've been doing my research on how the media is portraying Donald Trump and how the media is portraying Kamala Harris in this in the lead up to November the 5th it really is blatantly clear that Donald Trump um, he's always been up against it even when he came up to the presidential election in 2016 he won became president but he was always up against it. I've ha had a video, which I played in one of my previous videos, that even his presidential campaign video deliberately showed that the media was against him, but he still won. Uh, so here we are, 2024, and once again, he's running, but he's not just running against Kamala Harris. He's running against the media as well. It's crazy, really, when you look at Kamala Harris and how she portrays herself in the media. It really does show how awful she is. Probably even more awful than I am at doing commentary voiceovers. Uh, she's she has this nervous giggle, and when she seems to. Uh, what was it? Talk about stuff. And uh, she talks about stuff so eloquently. And if you've made it worse and you say you're the same as the guy who made it that way and don't have a plan to fix it, then everything you're saying is just fluff. So when we think about what's at stake in this election, whoa, it's packed with some stuff. <laughs> It's packed with some fundamental stuff. <laughs> I say rather articulately. <laughs> yeah, she said it like that. But then this is the person who is looking to be your next president. She can't stand there and answer questions that haven't been delivered for her ahead of time. Um, and the only network that appears to be saying it how it, how it is appears to be Fox. Um, all the other networks like CNN, MSNBC, and the primary one which started it all off with the presidential election was ABC. But as I've pointed out on previous videos, ABC is owned by Disney. Disney's CEO is Bob Iger, and Bob Iger hates Donald Trump. It is really important to note all this when you see how the media networks are and how they approach um, not just Donald Trump, but J.D. Vance as well. I've got a couple of clips here which really show how they really just uh, butt in, they hate to see how um, they approach things. I mean, J.D. Vance is very methodical, he's very articulate, and they try to cut him dead uh, during his uh, conversation, uh, I believe it was on ABC, uh, about immigration, and they tried to lay the blame at Donald Trump's door. Take a look at this. Kamala has imported an army of illegal alien gang members and migrant criminals from 
the dungeons of the third world. She has had them resettled beautifully into your community to prey upon innocent American citizens. That's what they're doing. And no place is it more evident than right here. Because in Aurora, multiple apartment complexes have been taken over by the savage Venezuela prison gang known as Tren de Aragua. Well, that was former President Trump speaking at a rally in Aurora, Colorado on Friday. Now, ABC News host Martha Raddatz decided to press vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance over Trump's comments. And Vance then went viral for his response. Watch. President Trump was actually in Aurora, Colorado, talking to people on the ground. And what we're hearing, of course, Martha, is that people are terrified by what has happened with some of these Venezuelan gangs. Sen Senator and Vance, I I'm going to stop you because I know exactly what happened. Martha. I'm going to stop you. The incidents were limited to a handful of apartment conflicts, uh, apartment complexes, and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns. A handful of problems. Only, Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America were taken over by Venezuelan gangs, and Donald Trump is the problem, and not Kamala Harris's open border? Americans are so fed up with what's going on, and they have every right to be. And I, I really find this exchange, Martha, sort of interesting, because you seem to be more focused with nitpicking everything that Donald Trump has said, rather than acknowledging that apartment complexes in the United States of America America are being taken over by violent gangs. Okay, let's let's just uh, let's just end that with they did not invade or take over the city, as Donald Trump said. Uh, I, I want to move on to just a few women. apartment complexes. No big deal. Now, remarkable as that was, the flip side to this coin is how Fox uh, essentially replied to this remarkable uh, take, which was on ABC. So. This was Fox's take on how they thought the commentator was uh, with J.D. Vance. Take a look. What a remarkable exchange that right to J.D. Vance's point illustrates exactly where the left wing media is. Yeah. Martha, Martha, Martha. OK, <laughs> look, Martha. First, we were told by the Democratic governor of Colorado that this was a figment of our imagination. Then Martha Raddatz tells us, oh, it's just a handful. She is a DC swamp journalist telling people who live in these working class apartments in Aurora, Colorado, that they should be okay with this, that their residences should just be taken over. This has happened across the nation, gang members committing crimes. In fact, we've seen crimes by Trinde Agua in Aurora, Miami, Chicago, Indianapolis, New York City, Dallas, and Wisconsin. Martha, how many buildings have to be taken over for you to give a flying flip about this? What if it was your home, Martha Raddatz? Tell us you're a DC swamp journalist without telling us outright. That is shameful. So <laughs> as you can see, the contrast is remarkable. You can see how the media, which is almost in total supporting Kamala Harris and her race for the White House, and how Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are and their race for the White House. Over the years, I have really um, found some of uh, the media as a whole, not just uh, the ones that I'm promoting, appears to be promoting now it's they've really not really lived up to my expectations especially when i know that the media has been controlled since the 1950s even before that i will deep dive into that in other videos because i think it is really really important to talk about really really important to talk about but as Jesse Waters pointed, has pointed out, quite a number of things. Kamar Harris's campaign is not really going the way she wants. Take a look. And Kamala Harris has a man problem. White dudes for Harris isn't working, and the hombres don't trust her. Right now, leaning towards Trump, but I haven't made a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm also concerned about the way I feel President Biden was pushed aside. Oh. <laughs> and as Obama said, Harris also has a problem with the brothers. 
Well, now Joe Biden's out and Kamala's in. What do you think of her? Garbage. She's for herself. I don't know what she did when she was the vice president. I don't know what she's going to do now. She's part of the problem of the country. A lot of people vote because she's black. You don't vote for nobody because of their color. You know, you vote for what good they can do. You know, she could be she could be the devil in disguise. Donors are admitting men are gone. But Democrats say Kamala Harris isn't the issue. Men are. And they should see a psychiatrist. I think men are in crisis, actually, in this country. Uh, I think that plays out different ways. And not all men uh, are in crisis, of course. And not all men are just at home listening to Joe Rogan, being mm -hmm. angry or being recruited to fascism. Some just need therapy, like we all do. We need to have a real conversation about that rather than allowing this kind of drift toward this faux masculinity that we see Donald Trump evincing. So, do you really think Kamala is losing because men are in crisis? No. Real men aren't in crisis, but these guys are. I'm man enough to be emotional in front of my wife. In front of my kids. In front of my horse. I'm man enough to tell you that I cry at Love Actually. Goodwill Hunting. West Side Story. That and Predator. And I'm sick of so-called men domineering, belittling, and controlling women just so they can feel more powerful. That's not how my mama raised me. I love women. I love women who support their families. Women who decide not to have families. Women who take charge. And I'm man enough to help them win. So if you don't cry in front of your horse or at Love Actually, you're not a real man. And you need to see a shrink who will prescribe you medication that'll turn you into a zombie and allow you to enjoy being bossed around by a pretty woman. I just hope that all the women here tonight talk to all the men that aren't here tonight and all you brave men that are here tonight. <laughs> talk to all the other men that aren't here tonight. And let's just get it going. Enough with the fighting. Let's get to the uniting. Let's get to the joy. <laughs> That's the Democrats' idea of a brave man. Not a cop or a soldier or a guy who gets shot and pops back up. Democrats believe a brave man goes to Kamala rallies and nags their buddies into voting Democrat. But if a pretty woman doesn't do it for you, maybe the Messiah can turn you on. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I, I, I've noticed this, especially with some men who seem to think Trump's behavior, the bullying and the putting people down, is a sign of strength. And I am, I am here to tell you that is not what real strength is. Don't get it twisted, fellas. This is what a real man looks like. This is the kind of strapping masculinity that Democrats idolize. Michelle, I'll be right up. I'm almost finished my set. The kind of guy that loves vanilla soft serve. Take me out to the ball game, Barry. And then he told black men, vote for Kamala or you ain't black. We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. You're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Now, as for getting Barack Obama back on the campaign trail, just for her, it really is incredible that he said that but then, again, on, on Fox, this was the response. Take a look. Joining me now is Xavier Durasso, a former BLM activist, and Anton Daniels, a YouTuber, content creator. Xavier, let's start with you. You say you were personally, after watching them, offended by Obama's comments? 
Absolutely. I mean, first of all, Obama's not as talented of a liar as he used to be. But quite frankly, my ancestors fought way too hard for me to have the ability to learn how to read, just for Obama to expect me to be so uneducated to think that I would vote for Kamala Harris simply because she claims to be a black woman. And I mean, if people want to stop having Kamala Harris be called a DEI hire, maybe he should stop trying to remind us of her demographic every five minutes. Black men not supporting Kamala has nothing to do with her being a woman. It has everything to do with her lack of accomplishments over the last 1,359 days. Well, Anton, I'm watching this and I'm thinking to myself, it, it, the shtick is kind of worn thin with Obama, you know? How you doing, Pittsburgh? You know, that whole, it just seems very 2002 or three, I mean, 2008, I should say. Right, it doesn't, it doesn't quite have the same appeal as mega star-ish as he is. You know, it's a Hail Mary pass considering that we did vote him in based off of identity politics. And I'm not saying that all is bad because he did do some things that I didn't necessarily disagree with that Trump absolutely did better than him. But at the same time, I felt that it was incredibly disrespectful because he's making the assumption that we're not educated enough to lead our families, to look at the policies, to understand exactly what's going on with immigration. And we're supposed to overlook everything that they did over the last three and a half years that was not in our favor. And when I say our, I'm talking about the American people, let alone men, let alone black men. And we're supposed to vote for her because of some misogynistic reason that's made up and instead, we've learned how to educate ourselves, and now they've sent their Messiah back to rein us in and bring us back into the Democratic plantation. And most men that I've Ooh. spoken with have said that it's absolutely disrespectful and we're done with Obama. Well, Xavier, again, it, when he says, you're lucky Michelle's not here, he does, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I mean, is, I guess it's supposed to be funny because she'll scold them in a more convincing or scarier fashion. It's kind of treating young uh, black men as children, almost like your children and mommy's coming back and mommy's going <laughs> to chastise you and you're going to get punished. But you're supposed to vote against your own economic interests to make Michelle and Barack happy in their four mansions. It's absolutely degrading. And black men are sick of being reduced to being expected to think with our skin color. We have seen how terrible the Obama, Biden, Harris trilogy has been for our country. It has completely demoralized our country. And quite frankly, Obama has no credibility because this is the same man who heavily endorsed Joe Biden. And we all can feel in our pockets and we can see it for sure at our border just how terrible the Biden-Harris administration has been for our country. And Obama admitted himself back in an interview with Steve Colbert that if he could, he would run our country from an earpiece down in the basement. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> now, Xavier, um, I mean, excuse me, Anton, the media are really pushing Obama to be the you know rescue agent for Kamala's campaign. Watch this. Barack Obama, with joy and with humor, is able to sort of get through to an audience that it's not okay to lie. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to sell the presidency. It's not okay to be a narcissist and, and to have the reins of the presidency. Aunt Anton, uh, so, so Kamala's joy campaign isn't really working. So Obama's <laughs> gonna come in and again, you're supposed to make less money in real terms right. and be happy with it to make Obama and like MSNBC happy? I, I don't understand well, this argument. They took the same blueprint that got Obama elected, and he was a first for us, right? So our grandparents and our parents and things like that wanted to see this happen, but they were largely voting out of ignorance and voluntary ignorance because they only wanted that identity politics in order to push him through into the presidency. But admittedly, where he was charismatic, she isn't. And so we can see through her, she's a chameleon when they unleashed her and they allowed for her to be able to take reporters' questions and things like that, it showed that she was completely incompetent. So when Barack Obama tries to get, in inverted commas, the brothers to vote for Kamala, even the brothers aren't interested in the fact that they should be voting because they're black, because they do have a brain, the brothers, do have a brain and they want to vote for 
They want to vote for someone who's going to make America better. As the slogan goes, make America great again. It's that simple. They don't want somebody who's commander in chief, who can't even string a sentence together without giggling and saying stuff. It's quite remarkable. There is loads more coming as they as the race for the White House hearts up. And hopefully I'll be able to get lots more to you on Discovery Studio World. If you like this video, see where that arrow is pointing. Check out that video as well. Give it a click. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Check you for the next one.